I don't know. That's Friday was last Friday. 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 <laughs> I didn't get invited to this retirement party, that weasel. <laughs> These may be uh, overslept. Yeah, maybe yeah, he overslept. <laughs> yeah, maybe he overslept. He's falling right into it. It's today's Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Okay, I'll just call the meeting to order and we need to approve the agenda as printed. So, so second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the agenda as printed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Public comment on agenda items. I don't, there's no one on, right? Nope. Hearing none, seeing none. Communication shared by Solid Waste Board members. This is getting to be very formal. Well, at least Mr. and Mrs. Owl didn't, yeah, that would be recorded. So it's okay. we should name that. Okay. Uh, that would be a contest. Okay. Well, that would be a hoot. Oh, uh, <laughs> pretty fast this morning. Yeah. We're talking track yeah. all night. Okay, uh, approval of minutes of October 5th, open and closed session. So moved. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes of October 5th, open and closed session. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That had a carry. Oh, I wasn't here. Okay. And one abstention. We need to go into closed session if you would. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're still... Hold on. I'm just adding um Richard. Yeah. Okay. For closed session, he needs to be on. Richard Heinemann is our oh, yeah. in law that's yeah. going to be part of closed session. So. Okay. Yeah. Wanna... Okay. I can pursuant to section that eight five parent one parent e state statute wisconsin statute at this point in the meeting the board shall consider a motion to convene into closed session deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties the investing of public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session in relationship to power purchase agreement negotiation. We need a second roll call. All right, Paul? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Howie? Aye. Doug? Aye. Pat? Aye. And Jim? Aye. We are now in closed session. Okay, hold on one moment. Thank you. <laughs> Can you change voices? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like okay, Siri? With that. Yeah, right, right. I could right. change that annoying lady that tells me to turn and what to you can. do when you I can. Can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Reminds me of my ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got to go back in. We're in the open session again. We got to. We're going to talk about snow road notice a claim for groundwater. There comes out here. Yeah. Like tracking over here? No, I have tracking. No. We ready for? Well, number eight. Or, no, we can do whatever. Yeah, number eight right now. No action. Taken by the board. And then on to the next. No action on the groundwater. Oh. Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at number eight. Yeah. That's just that one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely no action on that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Okay, then now we have the media. Yeah. So good morning, good morning. Yeah. I, I know I know the board um had asked a couple months ago, maybe giving us a little dog and pony show on uh our social media applications and what we're using to uh to push out content for our programs. Um 
And then last, or like two weeks ago, there was a, a press release. Uh, I think it was first issued by Brown County and then we issued a press release that talked about the new app that we've been working on, which is the Better Than app, which uh, allows users to pick a state, a county, and you can simply scan a uh, UPC code on any product. And it'll tell you exactly uh, how it can be recycled um, in your area. So Jessica's got a, a demo of that as well. Um, so I thought with a little impromptu closed session meeting, we'd, uh, we'd have her uh, go through social and better been with you. And you can provide feedback, comments. Down, maybe you can download the better bin there. So, so. Cool. Yeah. So we've got just some social media overview and the better bin on both sides of it. Uh, the social media stuff's a little shorter. I just wanted to start. We'll uh, do an overview of that, and then we okay. can end with some better bin um, stuff and examples and whatnot. Um, so this is just something that I've been sharing. Um, we just had a meeting with our community uh, leaders and clerks and this. Uh, administrators last week and this was one thing I shared with them as far as just keeping aware of kind of the things that we're going to be um, promoting specifically on social media throughout the months um, this is kind of a guide for me to hit some of those topics that come around the same time of year each year um, but then there's flexibility with our content to just post things that come up whether that's a crisis situation or we're seeing a lot of you know contamination of this kind and whatnot but this is kind of our our theme. So October, we've been focusing on some food waste. Um, we'll do some meal planning posts and then pumpkins and home composting. Um, we are going to start a new program this year to try and um, put it out there as a feel good thing that we'll take pumpkins with our yard waste programs for this year. So I have some posts starting to be scheduled to let people know, hey, if you're, you know, jack-o'-lanterns looking more ghoulish than nice, you can bring it in for free um, for our residents. So that's one thing that we'll get Kind of some of that education um and then it's drug take back month or um october 29th is drug take back day and so we have some posts at the end of the month about that too um you'll see at the bottom it says rmw that's recycle more wisconsin so that's just um our arrows organization has their themes as well so some of them match and some of them will share some of that recycle more wisconsin content also um but that's just to kind of for me to know what they're talking about and then add some content that works for our program so yeah, waste reduction, holiday tips, holiday recycling, electronics coming up, and then we'll kick off the year with top tips again and trying to remind them, hey, you have new goals for the year, um, bring it back to kind of the basics. So then you can head on. Um, so Facebook is still our primary engagement, our primary focus. Um, we get, we have the most followers and a lot of different types of engagement. Um, so we do have 4,338 followers now which um, when I started kind of looking at that and getting those statistics from the beginning of the year, 4% increase from 4168, I feel like that's kind of fun because um, that's mostly um, organic interest that we've been able to drum up with some of the posts and engagement. Um, we started tagging more accounts more frequently, um, some of our municipalities sharing and interacting with Abigail and Brown a lot more. And so we've been you know, able to see, I mean, 170 is 170, right? So. Um, continuing to try and grow that. Um, and then that's pretty typical. I, it hasn't changed much when I took that screenshot in April. Uh, this is one from today. So about 70% women to 30% men is our um, demographic. So trying to garner some more engagement with the men, but um, that's pretty typical for what we expect. And I just put a screenshot because the screen is kind of blank, but that's what our page looks like. Um, I took a picture of all of our fun examples um, that we recycled because I thought that was kind of key to some of our messaging. Um, and then, yeah, you can see just like the top of our page there. Um, I might see one of them things I share. Yeah, yep, you're one of our it's top shares. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how many people um, respond positively about some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, I never thought it would. Well, I always encouraged all kinds of social, you know, get out, get the information out there as much as you can and just flood the environment with that stuff. And eventually it catches on. 
I just followed it amongst students, whatever. There, there's the one I just. Yep, I I thought you said that. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's part of the, the great thing with Facebook is some people do share, and like if you can generate that excitement, it'll go pretty far. Um, but again, that demographic being from older, uh, you know, typically you have the house owners, more educated, um, older demographic. So still trying to use some of those other platforms um, to get some of that younger engagement. But these are some, um, I was just looking through some of our analytics for this meeting and I was like, oh, this is kind of a trend that I guess um, has really stuck out. So, uh, you know, I'm just still kind of playing around with posts, what kind of works, what kind of doesn't. And um, this, uh, I guess, the easy clear recycling tips is really popular. So I didn't think these ones would go viral and um, or so to speak, and they have. So on the left, just posting a picture of the different types of egg cartons and reminding people, hey, two out of these three are good options for your recycling bin, but the third one's not. Um, reached 2,600 people, over 500 engagements, reactions, um, shares. So for only four shares, somehow got a lot of a lot of traction, which is really cool. Um, but I think they really like that like consumer choice information. And then this one actually was just posted yesterday. And I think you shared it yesterday, Pat. Um, so we're going to see how high it gets. But um, 2,000 reach, 130 engagements, 50 reactions already, and 24 shares, which is a, a pretty high number for what we see. Um, a lot of the shares I've noticed, though, are like personal. Um, like you can just share it to Messenger, share it directly to a friend. So, because I'll I can see if it's shared to a page, because then I go and like some of them. Like if City of Menasha will share it, it'll be on their feed, and so I can like it. And I think I can only like like six of those shares. So six of them are public, and the rest of them are just private messages or whatnot. Um, but still, that was a really good tip of reminding people clearly, like this is this kind of a niche topic of the lid, the metal lids. We get questions on a lot, so like let's make a post directly about that. So trying to um, listen to the questions we get from people and during presentations and stuff and garnering some interest around those types of posts. On the other side, um, humor. I don't play with humor too much. Um, I don't consider myself super funny sometimes, so I don't know how to, um, you know, you want to keep it clean and across the board. Um, but these two were kind of some more humor that did get some engagement. Um, so the, I love the little meme, gets juice box for snack, recycles. Um, that was for early in September for school year and reminding them to recycle juice boxes or milk cartons um, and got some good engagement there. And then um, that grandma post, uh, we've used that one before and it hit again. Um, obviously, if you like click open the pictures, you can see the full uh, picture there. And it says, you put that in your recycling cart. And then that was some of our photos of all the different crazy items we've seen on our recycling tip for over the past few months just to be like no like these are some of our um i don't know just shocking things so that one got uh, some good engagement too and likes and whatnot and then one thing that we have been doing more regularly is playing with facebook paid advertisements and so that really helps us get our reach out there um, a lot more than just the organic engagement and so these are the last two that we've um, put out for September, well, early September and end of September. Um, but our Better Bin app, we did, I did put a advertisement out there. We'll continue advertising that over the next year to get that pilot program going. Um, but we, can, we paid 30 bucks and reached 7,000 people, um, eight, over 800 engagements, 130 reactions, 48 shares. So at least 48 people saw it and like sent it to a friend or put it on their um, page. And so that was kind of cool to see that take off. Um, and in the parentheses, parentheses there, excuse me, the 47% organic. Um, both of these ads actually kind of surprised me. Usually we put out a paid ad and it's like 80% paid and then there's some natural organics, but both of these hit as like original posts anyway. And then the paid advertising just boosted it. So that one um, was about 50-50 that people just saw it in their feed regularly and shared it and liked it. And then also then 50%-ish um, saw it through the sponsored ad that pops up on Facebook. Um, and then this one kind of going with that easy, clear information, plastic bags being our number one thing, um, tried to just like get it kind of out in a narrative form. Like um, I put in there too, um, even if the bag says recyclable, it is not meant for your carts. We know it's confusing, but we promise this is true. So just trying to like um, hit some of those ways that people might be confused or about thinking about it. Um, and that one was spent 25 bucks and reached 84, 8,300. 
Um, that one was two thirds just organic reach. People really liked that one naturally. And then we got some of that um, paid boost in there as well. Um, lots of engagement, lots of comments. Uh, that one was fun to comment and uh, look through and people were like, oh, you can take them to this place. And, oh, you can take them to that place and bring them to the dog park. And um, so there were some good comments on that one um, that we were kind of playing back and forth and people were um, positively engaging with that one. There was one negative comment that commented on taxes should be, if, you know, if we're paying taxes for recycling, they should have a way to collect these or whatever. So we just ignore those, but a lot of them are really positive communities kind of building around that concept. So you have a lot of input or, um, from all your arrow members, assuming a lot of the yeah, um, so we'll like interact with each other on Facebook too. Um, another one that's similar to Tri-County is the Central Wisconsin Recycling Collective. And so that's like Marathon County and County and Portage County. Um, they kind of have a similar entity, multi-county entity like we do. Um, so they typically post some good content and we'll share sometimes. We'll pack the county um, is not directly in our Tri-County, but we work pretty closely with them and we'll en engage with them. Um, but Arrow does have the uh, communications, marketing, and education committee, and they're the ones that help create the content for Recycle More Wisconsin Facebook page, um, different campaigns that will run for Earth Day and America Recycles Day in November, and so we'll kind of create that content together and then um, share it on all of our pages across the state. Yeah, so I would see that it would, it would be nice to have something put together that's state, reaches everyone in the state, and then team up with uh, organizations like uh, SWANA mm -hmm. and whatever, because they have a great bl blanket worldwide and whatever and stuff. So, but you're doing a good job. Yeah, with recycling, it's tricky to keep it local or keep it like universal for the most part. Um, so we do engage to the extent that it makes sense. And you'll see that graphic there is from the Recycling Partnership. Um, they do a lot of work state level and nation level. And so they have um, different... Well, yeah, what's the length of time of exposure for the uh, expense? I usually set it to about a week. So $30 over a week is like 2 to $3 a day. So right? $30, the ad is $30 per week. For one, well, we just usually set it for the one week. So that's like, it's like a one time, like, let's put some out there, let's put some out there, let's put some yeah. out there. We don't do this on a continuing basis. I mean, uh, are you sharing with us that there is a specific time that this was exposed? Yes. Uh, uh, for a week, and during a week, it reached 7,081 people. Right. And during that week, you had the engagements and the shares and everything from that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, to that point, though, so we don't typically rerun ads. Usually it's like a topical thing, like, oh, we saw this in our recycling floor, for example, and we'll like run an advertisement to try and get the word out there. Um, but this better one will definitely, I'll probably run it again in a couple weeks. Um, I don't know if I really need to adjust that one, but even just like reposting it again um, to get some continued engagement, we could run them for longer, but it's more so a, a cheap way to get, you know, a couple thousand people aware of our message. Um, which is a pretty good like cost per impression type thing versus you know um, some of the higher ticket radio tv print ads um, that we don't know how many people are seeing them so this one's a cool opportunity to test some of that uh, do you do you notice that municipalities are supporting you with this or i mean most all to the Alaska village way they all have everybody's going to their own Facebook stuff mm -hmm. here. The signing municipalities were all sharing on their Facebook page. It seems to me that would be extremely helpful. Yeah, we do get some of that. And um, part of the meeting that we had last week was a reminder like, hey, we're going to be talking about these topics. If you want to create your own post around that topic, great. If you just want to be aware of it and share some of that as we're putting it out, trying to get some more of that cross collaboration. Um, the tricky thing, I guess Nina Public Works has their own page and Menasha Public Works has their own page, but any of our smaller municipalities like Village of Winnicani and Fox Crossing have a 
general page. Um, so obviously they can share stuff, but there's a lot more that the municipalities share through that forum. Um, so it wouldn't be a direct, like every time we post, you can share it, but trying to get some more consistent um, engagement or topics out on their regular page too is something that we're, we're trying, um, but I don't have top control. <laughs> if I could go post up behind the scenes, I'd probably post all the time. But yeah, definitely, definitely an opportunity for sure. Part of it is taking the step of tagging them too, which we've done it on occasion, taking those communities so that it shows up that, hey, you can tag, make them aware that that post went out, and okay. it's really easy for them yep. to share that post. Yep. So just an example of some of the stuff you might see. Paid or otherwise, it'll show up like a post, but it'll say sponsored post kind of on top if it's uh, showing up in your feed. So looks regular, but it's kind of like hidden in your feed typically when it's a paid ad. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see, I just, we were, we were going to do better than first, which I had, I'll have my screen share and then I was going to post these, but since I'll do the screen share later, I don't need to go through all of these. Um, but if you want to maybe click on Pinterest, Cassie, if you're able, then I can do the rest of them through my phone. So these are, um, just obviously Facebook is our main page and we put um, most of our effort into that, but we're still continuing to try and get opportunities with these other pages. Um, so kind of like that humor post with grandma, um, you put that in your cart. A lot of the reason that we got those photos was um, on our Pinterest page is I was trying to figure out a way to collect photos of a lot of different crazy items uh, in a way that was like people could access that list of items. And so on Pinterest, um, it's a, I don't know how familiar you are with Pinterest, it's typically like an ideas board and you, you virtually pin items onto different categories. Um, and so it's a bunch of pins created of photos that are, uh, I have a recycling rejects page. So that's primarily where we have our Pinterest and every once in a while I'll connect it, link it from our Facebook page to like, hey, have you seen our recycling rejects Pinterest? And then people can look at like all of these items we've received that are not acceptable in our bin. So it's a way to just kind of collect some of those ideas. Um, if it's not popping up, actually. It's not coming up. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um I can I might be able to even pull it up on here. I just remember looking at yeah are there any expenses involved with uh exposure on these other uh... Um, not, well, you can do it. So Instagram, because it's linked with Facebook, if you promote something on Facebook, you can also have it, um, you know, parallel posting, uh, paid ads on Instagram. So those work hand in hand really easily. Um, TikTok, I have not looked at any paid sponsorship on that. That's a whole different ballgame with the nature of that platform. Uh, Pinterest, I don't think so. I was just talking with Kat. Uh, These are mo mostly used for communications from the general public. Yes. Someone sees that we have a page and they uh, communicate with us. Yeah, uh, or consume the content. They, they take the content. Yeah, right. so different platforms to try and engage with different groups of people. And there's right no here. expense for that expense. No, not just having them. Nope. Um, again, you can do paid advertisements on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, we've done a few with that, like hiring ads on LinkedIn. You can pay for promotion, um, which we've used uh, occasionally when there's a need for that. And then Twitter, uh, similar like Facebook, you can pay to promote a tweet. And then uh, that's more of like a, for professionals or businesses, um, news stories on Twitter. So it just kind of depends on um, the audience that each of those different platforms can engage with. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to go back to Zoom then, Cassie. Mm -hmm. We have a YouTube. Um, <laughs> there's a few videos yeah there, there's a couple videos really? um, yeah so and that was kind of my comment with TikTok too we have like 10 TikToks um, the video platform definitely does engage more users uh, I think it's more enjoyable one thing with Instagram is that static photos I've heard that that's declining in popularity just having a bunch of pictures and so they are actually trying to mimic TikTok and reels, like video posts instead of regular pictures are becoming more popular on Instagram. 
Um, so it's definitely something we're aware of, um, but it's a lot more time consuming and I haven't um, gotten good enough at it yet to make it kind of quick and efficient, but it's something that I still work on and have some ideas for continuing to garner content. So up and coming, um, but it's a little bit more time intensive on the front end to get videos edited versus photos. And so we're trying to mix them together at, um, at discretion and so forth. Do you have any data on um, uh, the ages that you reach in any, you know, in any one of these, or, or, you know, if you go out on Twitter, do they have some, I guess, a, uh, a data collection of the ages of people that are being reached? Or do you, can you track any of that? Um, so I know you can obviously through the, Facebook, right? You can. So Instagram, we have 88 followers, and until we reach 100, they don't give us any demographic information. Okay. Um, so that one will give us a little bit. Um, but they do offer that. Yeah, they can. Okay. So some of, some of them have analytics. There's the general industry information about Instagram. Or yeah, Instagram users are typically between 15 and. 30, 25 or so. So we kind of know the general, um, yep. but our platforms haven't gotten quite as <laughs> much engagement yet to, for us you to be able to get that. that. Yeah, I can email out um, Thank you. the links and stuff as well. So, okay. I think I have it. Oh. We, we get all this information. I don't know. County board gets any of this backup information like this or not. At the yeah. I don't know like, tell how much the answer must be. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for saying you're not even going to get paid. Yeah. Trash Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you're controlling this through your phone? Yes, I have the Zoom app on scary. my phone so I can it's scary. Uh, <laughs> screen my, yeah, share my phone screen. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay. I tried that one. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just once. Operator there. <laughs> okay, so better bin looks like this. It's this green one um, in the bottom corner there. Uh, you can find it in either App Store for iPhone, um, Apple, or Google Play. Um, so just typing in that better bin. We do have some of our resources that use a QR code. Um, that's really also smarter than you, you think we would be aware of. And um, scanning that QR code on any device will automatically identify which platform you're using and then go to that corresponding you know, Apple App Store or whatnot. And so we've been able to use, start using that QR code on um, some of our handouts to make that easy for people to find it. Or you just uh, go in, type better bin, and then that's the icon you're looking for. So, Let's play around with it. So this is what it looks like when you get in there. I can't, sorry about this. I can't get rid of the little um, update, but that's all right. Um, so if you were first downloading this app, it would pop up with a screen um, like this. So this is what you would open when you get directly into it. Um, the Better Bin app is created by a local entrepreneur in Wausau, Oaxaca. Wausau. West. Oh, so Wausau. Okay, Wausau area. Um, so that's why we ultimately wanted to go with this and support the app is support, again, local Wisconsin um, business, but she has definitely taken off and has um, both composting communities and recycling communities. Um, so for our purposes, we're obviously um, recycling. So you just click on that. Um, and then you can see she did update this, which is really nice. Uh, that is really easy. So what state do you live in? Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then what county do you live in? You can see the we obviously have Brown, Rodigan, and Winnebago, and then she has some programs in other counties as well. 
Um, so then you click on Winnebago and you have your portal there. So uh, that was recently updated, which is really nice and convenient versus um, there were some issues if you typed in Nina or Oshkosh, it didn't pull correctly all the time. And so just having those straightforward options should make it pretty easy for people to um, find where they're from. Um, and then also share, like if they click out of Gaming County, it's not a big deal. All the same information, um, we just get specific, um, what do you call it, uh, analytics based on how many users are currently using the Winnebago County platform. So we officially started it in August, but we got our first analytics for September. And I had them, but um, I think we had 165 users for Winnebago County, I believe, um, for the first month. So, and we did some of that paid promotion towards the end of September, early October. And so we're hoping that come October, we'll start to see some more um, pick up with that. So uh, we have a few people using it already, which is good to see. And uh, we'll see, continue driving that to get people using this. So you pick your community, that's all you need to do. Um, you'll see the home screen here is uh, our Tri-County logo up in the top left. Um, and then that's the heading. You can click on that video and that brings you directly to the uh, about 17 minute VERP tour video that Marissa from Outagamy County had made, um, which is one of our popular education tools that we use. Um, if they can't come to the MERP to our facility in Appleton for whatever reason, it walks them through the whole thing there. Um, has some information. Oh, there we go. This is the top. Um, Trying to get that brand recognition, Tri County Recycling. If you're brown out of game in the Bego, you're in the right spot. Uh, and kind of describing just the basics of that program for people who want to look at that. Um, you can directly download our recycling guide right from here. So they have access to it on their phone if they want or look at it. Um, what to do with. If you click on that uh, icon or whatever, it'll take us directly to our waste wizard. And so one thing that's nice about this is we can directly integrate the two apps together. And so they're not um, they're not exclusive, but they're complementary and offering the same information, but in different formats. This one does expand to any type of disposal information as we talked about. Um, so tires and appliances, electronics, yard waste, so forth, they can search it. Whereas then the better bin is directly um, household recycling information. But wanted to make sure that that was linked because um, this is a, you know, also a paid tool that we have and want to make sure that we're um, utilizing both cooperatively. Meet the Ugly Eight. Um, oh, I don't get called very often. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more than group. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Meet the Ugly Eight, that's directly from our Tri-County Recycling Guide. And all of these can be updated as we see fit. So we are due for um, submitting some updates and changes here soon, but this is kind of what we started with. Um, and then directly linking to Adagami's TikTok, they have gone viral, as I think we've mentioned before. And so utilizing that information is good for all of our counties and we can have that on any of our portals. Um, these tips and tricks are what, I'm, what will get updated soon for holiday recycling and type stuff. Obviously pool and beach in the summer was important. Um, Tanglers is always a topic, um, and that one can be updated as well, but seeing how we can uh, set this up seasonally as well for things that we're seeing and have that relevant to our users at any point. Okay, so that's like the face of the app. And then I do have some examples just so you can see what it looks like to scan. Um, so if you ever looking, okay, so I have this item in my house now, what do I do with it? The bottom scan camera icon is what you'll need to do. Um, and then you'll, it'll pop up with this large barcode area. What's really nice about it is it's uh, super user-friendly. So you don't have to get lined up really close. Like honestly, you kind of just like scan an area and it'll pick up any barcode in there. So it's uh, really good at doing this job, which is good. So say you have an item like this, just get it somewhere close and it pops up automatically, pulls up the item super uh, pretty convenient. A lot of them will have pictures. So obviously this one, you can double check. Yes, that matches the item that I expected it to. I know that it's the correct information. Big green box that says recycle um, with some additional information. If they want to read, typically people, we assume people don't read too much. So it's simple text, um, but also just having that bright green recycle makes it super simple for them to know um, what to do with that item. Another one here, a little different. 
then Mountain Dew. Um, this one does say recycle, um, but then also does have a comment in the text. Um, any bottle connectors should go in the trash. So in this case, obviously I have a single bottle, but typically I might've picked it up, you know, in the six pack from the store. So it has some of that additional information. Um, sometimes it'll say throw freshness seals in the trash for uh, different type of food containers or yogurt or whatever. Um, so it has some of that additional information to get all of that education right uh, at the top. Or nice thing about that, everybody can track what you're eating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and another with some information as well the best way to also recycle the lid is to either keep it connected to the can or place the lid inside and then crimp or crush the can so the lid does not fall out so <laughs> um so that's part of the education that we tell people directly um knowing that small lids like that have, can get lost in our facility and we have all of that directly accessible for our users uh, this is the one you saw when I had my app open, but I like to use this example as well. Pringles is one of our, is an example of one of the confusing items we get, things like this, or goldfish containers, or um, any of those mixed material tube type packaging. Um, these are the items that we really want people to scan, right? Like you're not gonna scan every water bottle. Typically people might know loosely those like basics. And so it's things like the, this, the weirder item that they can get that real time information. Yeah. Has pay better been a fee for their app? We do. It's is it a one-time fee or is it a, you know, a, a time? Uh, yeah, Kathy can explain a little bit more about the contract that we signed for that app. Yeah, we uh, we negotiated a contract with Better Bid that is a lump sum for all of our users, all of our residents can sign up and use it. And it's through Tri-County. So it's not budgeted through Winnebago County's education fund. The Tri-County is paying for it through their education fund, the pilot program. And as we move forward, the popularity of this will renegotiate future years. And I think this one is a it's a one year. Oh, one year. Well, what category uh, in the budget uh, do we put? Uh, it's not in our budget. It's, it's in the Tri-County's. Okay. This particular one is, yeah. but uh, others of them, say like uh, better bin. The waste wizard. So the, the waste the waste wizard is also a tri county budget item. For example, like our Facebook advertisements or any of those paid advertisements, we have a Winnebago a small Winnebago County advertising fund, and that covers things like some of our printing projects. Some of our paid advertisements online and other um, publications. So being the budget of the advertising. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's where we're putting what account for the chart is under basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Hospitality. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so this one again, <laughs> uh, making it super simple, bright red, will catch people's eyes, be very clear, trash. Um, with information, multi-material packaging not acceptable. Other examples. So this is something you might see. Not everything will have a photo. Um, the database is constantly growing as she's able to get um, databases from stores and uh, product manufacturers and things. But sometimes people will submit other items that aren't in there, and so it won't have a photo. But it's still you can check. Oh yeah, this matches the. Description, this is just a little squeeze bottle juice thing that I had. Um, and then says trash, small plastic packaging items are not recyclable in your cart. So this is a size issue that people might not know. And they just see, oh, it's plastic packaging. Of course, it's fine. Um, and then reminding them, well, size does matter. And this one is too small for our facility. So this might sound like a dumb question. But I'm going to ask it. So the barcode on this product who controls no obsolete <laughs> telling you whether it's recyclable or not? Who does that? Like within the app? Right. When they produce this product, they who puts that barcode? Does the, the manufacturer puts that barcode on there and all the information is stored it's in that not, barcode? It's not storing whether it's recyclable or not using that barcode. That barcode is used for sales. Purposes and tracking inventory okay. for the store. 
yeah. for the purposes of the store and retailing that that material. The generator of this app was smart enough to say every product that's sold is going to have more than likely is going to have a barcode, and she built those barcodes into her program to then tell her program, okay, look this up within this regional market to see if this specific barcode on this for this item, if this barcode is recyclable within that market. So she's piggybacking on a system that's already in place to apply it to our purposes of this. Yes. And then it's universal. So anywhere you buy that bottle, the manufacturer puts the same barcode on it. So thankfully it's like static, right? It's not constantly changing with different barcodes. Um, and then as far as it works on the back end, it's categorized into, you know, like very um, specific item types. So like water bottles, PET number one water bottles is going to be the main category. And then she'll identify which barcodes fall under that. And so automatically when it scans that, it recognizes, okay, this is in the PET bottle category. Our system is set that we accept PET bottles. And so it'll recognize, okay, through that, you know, line of, logic within the app. Yes, this is a bottle, this accepts it, it could be kind of cyclic. So that she can manipulate it per the different programs as well, because then she just categorizes them different for the different apps while um, the items are recognized. So your scanners at the facility pick up on any of this data? No. Um, just one couple, we'll do it just a couple more to see some of the other different things that will pop up. Um, so this is just like crackers. Um, and the thing about this, right, there's the box, and then there's typically some sort of foil bag inside, or like if you get cookies with that plastic tray or whatnot, um, it will recognize which products have that multiple different types of material. And so then you get this yellow partially recyclable. The exterior box or packaging should be flattened and recycled, but the inner bag, wrappers, pouches should not. So being able to know that the consumer has a certain type of product and with different materials, um, being able to address that. Oh. Yes. Who actually uses these? The app? I mean, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're presenting that to us, which is very uh, educational and instructive. Uh, but in the real world, uh, does Susie Homemaker have her... Uh, uh, Android or iPhone uh, program so that they they distinguish yeah. between them. I know my my wife does it in her head uh, from <laughs> what you know. Uh, uh, the new generation un, un, will non-digital sources uh, uh, steer her. Uh, but you know, are there you know are the millennials uh, set up a household like uh, maybe my granddaughter uh, if she gets a uh, an item like you know, presenting does, does she go and check that? Are there kids that uh, that do this? Well, and that's the hope. And so obviously we're just within that second month or so of really rolling it out. Um, so between, well, this, is, this is on the frontier of what, what we're going to be able to uh, expect the next generation is uh, how, how they're behaving. Mm -hmm. We've already put in our lives. <laughs> well, the fantastic thing about it, Paul, is more often than not, people have a smartphone, right? So it's open to anybody who has that smartphone and are interested in, in recycling and recycling, right? Because chances are this is going to be on you. Whether you're taking the trash out, I mean, most people have a, a phone on and whether they're taking the trash out or they're going shopping and making consumer. Yeah, I know the other day, my wife was saying that she's got two pages of apps and then my granddaughter says, well, I have four pages of apps. <laughs> it's and, super popular you know. <laughs> for the younger, like, they're going to get apps. They live their life with apps, and that's one thing that is easily but, but you familiar for them. Have your wife contact us. We'll set her up with this app, <laughs> oh, 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 and, and then she can tell you if it's useful or not. I'm in Paul's ear, and this is hard for me to totally grasp, but I'll tell you. I'm dying for you to check out that propane thing. <laughs> yeah, I know of a thousand. I mean, that 
at Critters, we sell a thousand of those tanks every year. And I absolutely hate <laughs> throwing them in the garbage. They seem like the biggest waste in the world. We and can take them for free recycling here. Did you know that? I did not know there that. You go. So, so I'm, I I'm waiting for you to scan it. I, can not <laughs> I may have to give that to some my grandson to scan it because I won't know how, but I appreciate that I can at least find out what in the world to do with yeah. them. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so people can go to start using that app and they can scan that product. And if it's not recyclable, they can, I'm not going to buy it. Potentially. That is a movement that people, yeah, that, that, to me, that, makes, that, that yeah. makes sense if you, you know, want to carry that to the next level. Right. <laughs> so I think we're good, looking for, on. good for the people, you know, the, the manufacturers need to buy into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and Betterbit is definitely doing some work with that to understand like the value of, obviously she does get a lot of data of what types of well, items people course. are scanning, so she's all got about, a lot of power there to, data. yeah, and communicate with them. Um, but yeah, that would be the hope. We think it's going to happen more so in the kitchen. If you're hovering over the bin and you're not sure, give it a quick scan, but all the way from the beginning of the line would be an awesome way for consumers to use that. There's, there's currently an ad out there for giving your windshield replaced and they make a big deal about this company not only replaces it but they recycle your same old, um i'm thinking they recycle it as ultimate daily cover but they still can <laughs> call it recycling um but Something. yeah it's a big deal i would think that especially some of the older generation wouldn't scan that in the store because they buy on price, not necessarily on the uh, possibility of recycling. Yes, and but some of the younger, my generation will spend more on something that is labeled eco friendly or made of recycled content or okay. um, whatever. So maybe even to check, like, hey, this says recyclable. Can I actually recycle it? Well, that it may affect some people versus others. So um, yeah, definitely demographics may use it differently. Um, and that's why the waste wizard we think is a little bit more popular potentially with an older generation. And this is going to be a lot more convenient, familiar for the 15 year olds and whatnot. So, good question. Um, when you bring up in, in, the Bitterbin, when you bring it up in Orange County, California, would it be just for Orange County, California that they would say that it is? This is not recyclable, or it is recyclable. So it's different between Wisconsin and it is. Yeah. Wisconsin. So they're so all Cal is is the driver. Somewhere. Right. Okay. Yep. So Thank she you. uploads it specifically yep. for the community that it's a part of. Mm -hmm. So California can have its own rules versus us, which is why this is super helpful. And say you move to Green Bay or whatever, like you, you or you have family in Green Bay, be like, hey, I I see your county on there. I know you can go up from you know Appleton or whatnot. Uh, the information in all three is the same, but it, people can feel more comfortable. Like, I know that this is my information. So really driving that when we promote it, instant, local, accurate, updated um, information. Uh, one more thing as far as the, are people going to use the app? And then I will scan this propane canister. Um, but you'll see this gift box in the top corner. Um, that's the rewards feature. And so that's really one thing that we think is going to drive uh, continued usership of it as well. There are um, some of our generation that will scan receipts and scan this and that and the other to try and garner rewards. So every time you scan an item, it will give you points. Um, well, that's why it didn't pop up. I scanned all these before the meeting. So you can only get points for one item within, uh, I think, one time a week. So you couldn't sit here and scan the same item and get a lot of points. So I scanned these right before the meeting and they didn't pop up. Um, but it'll pop up and say, you got 25 points. And then um, that's the cumulative total up in this quarter. And then that gets you a free stay at that, at that place in Winnie County on the water. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then they have some popular uh, different rewards that you can categorize. So Airbnb, Amazon, uh, there's a couple uh, nonprofits to donate to. So you can do NAACP. Petco, REI, donate to the Nature Conservancy, um, and Whole Foods Market. So this is something um, we'd have to have some additional conversations to get different ones, but these are pretty uh, standard that someone can find something they like and well, not nice. be able to.
So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, for Amazon, 3,000 points, you get $35, 15,000 points, $15, um, So it's a, a little bit of a heftier, you know, you don't just get to scan 10 things and get free rewards, but it's definitely feasible if they do 10 items a day, then they can, um, or over time, they'll so wrap up. Just things. go into the store and scan it. You could. Once a week, once a week, if you know, I mean, hey, if you know, a lot of time, you can. I'll see all them people. Yeah, yeah. so that's one of these things. You can't cash it out though, but if you can get a lot from Amazon, it's well as if, um, if you want it. So that's another thing to try and drive some usership of it. But okay, back to the items. Oh, bum, 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 bum. Bum. Okay, so then. Get that reset. Okay, so here you go. You've earned 25 oh. points. That's what it looks like when it pops up for um, items that you scan. Again, different color, different message. Thumbs up with blue for drop off. Um, and then the contents of this container are considered HHW. When empty, this container is not recyclable and should be discarded in the trash. If the container still has some inner contents, it must be collected as household hazardous waste. Um, that one we may be able to, so it's not dangerous for the garbage, but we can recycle it here. And so we'll make sure we get that updated, but it does then do link directly to our waste wizard. Um, if you do, let's see, I think it's under camping propane cylinder, one pound. Um, drop off propane tank. Now you'll see Adagami, Winnebago, and Brown County can all take it um, as a recycling item. Um, or in your nearest and then, yeah. And then at the bottom, of it's MC, then you can dispose of it. So, but it does have that here for us as a disposal option. Um, we can make sure we update because I know this is one we don't want to see in the recycling cart. So, some of these hazardous, explosive things um, you don't want to want to see in your cart, but collect them. Drop them here and we'll get them recycled. So we'll make sure that is updated for that as well. Um, speaking of though, say something wasn't in our system, it does have a search feature here too. So you can type by items. Um, so one thing that I know we get questions about sometimes would be like a K cup, which sometimes promotes recyclability but is not recyclable in our program. Um, it doesn't really matter. So then you'll see it can it'll pop up the closest type of different products that you may see, um, like K-Cups, trash. And then some of them have that link for more information, go here. Pizza boxes is a big one. They don't typically have um, QR or scan codes on them necessarily. So you can type in a, a general item name. And then this one says, recycle your pizza box, which is um, you know, confusing for some of our users. So it has both functions that you can type, start typing in some sort of product name too. If it doesn't have a scan code for or whatever reason, or you ripped off the label, um, you should be able to find some of that information. Otherwise, that scan feature. And then last but not least, if you have an item that's not in the database, just wanted to go through what that looks like as well. So this is just a Christmas soap, so I figured it wouldn't be in there. Um, so take a photo of the front of the product and submit it to us and we'll get back to you. It says within 24 hours, um, but I've gotten emails within within the hour that they'll just double check it, look at that uh, image to make sure they have the right type of packaging. And then yeah, in the back end, they'll categorize it into those categories, like I said, so metal can or plastic bottle or whatever. They'll look at it and this one would probably be under plastic pump bottle and then it would um, autofill and email you directly that information for you submit, thank you for submitting this product that is recyclable in your community. Thanks for helping us recycle, right? Or something kind of like that. So then um, I'll just put in the product name. And you don't have to do this um, if you don't want to, but if you are you know, really dedicated and want to fill in some of those gaps, then you just type in champagne toast and so. And take a photo just, and so this just helps them identify that type of um, packaging, and then you submit it, and you get another 10 points for helping with that program. So um, that's kind of the so similar, like 
mining Bitcoin. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I'm pretty sure Paul is going to be out late tonight. No doubt. The great thing about taking the step to to put that out there too, I would say, it lets them know it's not in their database. They don't live in the database and it improves our local database. So every time people take the time to do that, it's going to help us out in the long term. So we're also promoting, so, you know, to take the time to go ahead and add them. This is phenomenal. Pat, you want to you want her to stand your uh, photo about one? Here, would you, do you want the honor? No, ah! I'll do that. I'll do that in my. You want your box? <laughs> <laughs> it's going in the recycling bin. Boy, I. Think it's good. Most of the things, yeah. the things you can't recycle, you can put in an extra three mil black garbage bag. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have for our reviews. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll make sure to um, I can send that other information to you for our social media. Um, and what yeah, way back when, when you talked about Facebook, it was, it was like some, yeah, yeah, <laughs> some borrowed yeah, universe, for, some universe. Yeah. But the, the Better Bin app, um, Jessica's going to put together an instructional an instructional video for Tri County for how to find the Better Bin app, how to load it on your phone, and how to use it. It's going to be a little bit shorter than what we did today, but just as an FYI for resource if you're thinking of, of adding it to your phone down the road. We will have instructional videos out there eventually on how to use it. Yes, that one will go on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and then be linked to our website so people, if they, you know, some right. people find us through our website, some people find us through, you know, on their phone or their computer, then you can access that information direct link, uh, directly linked to our other resources. Trying to get people to understand the full breadth of the different things that we have. Great thing for county board. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that all that, that you know, you that little bit of information just to show them that we do stuff, that we are part of the team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah certainly when we you have can pass this stuff out at the when we have a resource basketball game already so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Good thank on. you. Yeah. Number eight is there's nothing to discuss no. on that. That's okay. Have a great afternoon, guys. Yeah. Here. Okay. With the director's report. Are you allowed to do that? No. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have a whole lot to, to uh, talk about, but um, one of the things that was out there kind of um, without a response was when we had our financial report provided to us, there was a deviation uh, associated with the grant money that we received. And um, I followed up with finance and uh, the, the uh, consulting firm is not gonna change the annual comprehensive financial report. They will make an adjustment in 2022 for that deviation in, in the uh, grant dollars. So. It sounds like there were some other little errors that were following kind of after the fact that they'll correct the next time around. I guess it's the you know first time that the county firm has done this for Winnebago County. Um, so little growing pains. Um, like I mentioned, the press release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, so this is the press release that went out um, on October 5th, um, promoting this Better Bin app. Um, some comments from Mark Walter, the uh, business development manager at Brown County's resource recovery facility. So, so we just piggybacked on their press release and had a press release of our own. So that was pushed out on the 5th. Um, transfer station operation kind of continue as normal. Uh, landfill gas, uh, 
Um, operations are a little, uh, still a little wonky from the last time. Uh, the, the chiller repairs, we're waiting on parts. We're gonna do the repairs all at once, hopefully in the middle part of November. So then when the time comes in the spring, when we need it again, it'll be ready to run with our uh, generation facilities. Uh, with the colder temps we're experiencing now, it's, it's not needed to, to drop the, uh, the dew point on the gas, so we're able to function without it right now. Um, engine 2R repairs are in progress. Um, we're hopeful that by the end of next week, uh, that unit will be ready to uh, start up and run. Engine 3 parts have been ordered. Uh, there's a one to two week lead time. Uh, so once we receive the parts, then finish this up with 2R repairs and gets that online, uh, then he'll start digging into engine three and getting that uh, back in shape so it can be part of the operational rotation. Um, and uh, like I was mentioning, we're occasionally running the flare. Uh, obviously with running just one engine, we might end up doing the same thing over the weekend um, where we'll uh, just run the flare over the weekend and let the hill catch up. So. That's really all I had to add. Knock on wood, things are operational. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Not motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. so, yeah, so, so, we, so the next the meeting day, uh, kind of coincides with the budget deliberation. So we're going to skip that one completely. So it's going to be. Um, November 16th. 16th. 16th? Yeah. 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 So that'll be the next week. Okay. And you do realize that the Michigan deer season opens on the 15th. So, that, uh, so you won't be there? <laughs> You're not going to be there? <laughs> well, you can always end by a Zoom. There, yeah. Yep, the, the UP is pretty good on now that <laughs> telephone service up there. Well, it seems, to, it seems to make your camera come through all the time. It does. Uh, yeah, do. I get a lot of beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, I have to look at the Zoom app. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to make a uh, note of a couple of future agenda items that will be coming. Um, uh, Kathy's been working on some RFPs for some of the capital items in 2023. So our loader replacement, the long lead time, um, she's working on our RFP for that, as well as the wood replacement wood grinder. Uh, so once we get those out on the street, um, likely the December meeting will we'll be bringing the results to the board to authorize uh, moving forward with a purchase order and then lead times are gonna be. Six months to nine months on the time Yeah. So um, the other thing from a county standpoint, um, they're going through the process of uh, recodifying the general code. So they've got a company that's going through all the chapters of general code, bringing them up to, up to date on the current state statutes, making sure the references match the current statutes now. Um, so it, it sounds like there's gonna be a process that they want us each department to go through. So our falls into chapter 15, which is sanitary landfill. I just got a draft um, yesterday afternoon, uh, but we'll be meeting, uh, staff will meet the clerk council to go through some of the recommended changes, uh, updates. Uh, then it'll go back for another redraft. Um, and at some point it will be brought to the solid waste board to review and approve moving forward. Uh, down the line, it's going to end up. I think each board committee, then it'll go to ENF, and then it'll go to county board for the final blessing on changes to the general code. Yeah. Awesome. Are we going to lose uh, power to tax? I don't I, think that I don't think that item was struck out of the draft that I got. So I don't know. But my my biggest fear is the control of all the. <laughs> fees that all the municipalities the users have paid over the years and then losing control of those fees it just goes into the general fund i, I don't i i, I think that's a, a, a very short-sighted 
um, decision, but the board will be making that decision. I think that you should, if, if anybody here from the county board has an opportunity to question that part of it, there needs to be some answers I think, before that decision is made. Yeah, and it, so. I guess I had expressed some concerns to the county executive and um, I was kind of waiting to, to see what the first draft looked like, what, what is being struck out and what's being suggested as changes. Um, at some point I just asked if maybe if it would help, help our board understand what if any changes are gonna be made uh, to have some sort of presentation to the board, um, but uh, I guess we're not we're not quite to that point. Yet. But that's that's coming down the line. Um, there was a schedule rolled out by Corporation Council yesterday at our department head meeting. Um, so more information to follow with that. Um, there's also going to be a, a push to kind of expedite the capital improvement plan. So the CIP for 2023 through 2027, we just got uh, we just got an email last week laying out the schedule that we have to present our 2023 to 2027 capital improvement plan to uh, the Department of Administration on November 8th. So um, you're not going to be able to see it before um, it's presented to them, but it will come back to the committees and the board to formally approve before it goes through in up and come board. A um, little different process than what we've used in the past, but uh, a little more control. But again, it's really just focusing on the 2023 capital projects, and it's you know it's more for um, you know whatever kind of finding uh, the county decides to do for some of the bigger ticket items. You know, we've always we put items in the budget. We've approved our budget. The county board will be deliberating the budget. You know, we put it in our 2023 budget for you know these a loader replacement, a grinder replacement. You know, we always bring it back back to the board to take action. You know, if we get crazy bid results, you know, we have an option to you know decline them and go a different route. So we always would bring things back to the board. Um, you know, before action is taken on these large capital projects. So yeah, and that will consume. How far does their uh, interpretation of capital improvements go? Is it just infrastructure? Does it include uh, dollar amounts? Or it's a hundred thousand dollars or more, no matter what the expenditure is. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we, you know, we've always prepared a list. And we review it annually with the board. Um, so that'll be something that Kathy and I, Kathy, will be sitting down and looking at, you know, items. We've got, you know, past CIPs have had replacements on the scale, adding, you know, maybe a scale kiosk to make uh, transactions uh, easier for users. Uh, we plan for gas equipment if all the stars align and um, upgrades are necessary. You know, compact replacements at the transfer station down the road, those sort of things. So uh, we'll put our draft together and get feedback from uh, the DOA and the exec office, and then we'll bring it to the board for action. Yeah. Well, that's never had an impact uh, on the you know, flow of the county's monies because it's always been internal. Uh, to uh, the solid waste board. So whatever the capital improvement may be, uh, it comes out of our appendix budget. It doesn't go into the, you know, the county executive's budget for everyone else but solid waste. Right. It hasn't in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So far. It has that so far. So. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion to remain second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. We are adjourned till November something. <laughs>